many times have we washed our hands in the last two and a bit years? Loads. We've got used to realising that in order to come into the presence of someone else, we need our hands to be clean. Now the Jews were very familiar, <laughs> no hand towel, grip dry. The Jews were very familiar with this because before coming into the presence of God, they knew that they needed to be clean, that they needed to be pure. Anyway, come along with me. Purity is a word that has come to mind as I read the verse that I was given for today's devotion. So here it is, Matthew 3, verse 11. I baptise you with water. Those who turn from their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is far greater than I am. So much greater that I'm not even worthy to be his slave. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now these were John the Baptist's words and John the Baptist was baptising with water. Um, as some of us may have been baptised with water. Now that's an outward show. Baptising with water, it, it cleans our outside. It's an outward sign of us saying that we want to change the direction of our lives. But heart surgery was going to come with a different form of baptism. And that baptism, John said, was a baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Now this word fire, it got me thinking about some significant Old Testament scenes that involved fire. Here we have Moses. And when Moses had his encounter with God through the burning bush, <laughs> yeah, definitely got fire there. God, the first thing God says is, this is holy ground, take your sandals off. There's that merging of purity that comes alongside this image of the fire. But also, this fire was a show of God's strength because later in this passage, God says, this will be the proof that I am the one who sent you. And God says to Moses, I am who I am. So we've got that reminder of purity. We've got that in reminder that in order to be in God's presence, we need to be clean, we need to be pure. We've got that reminder that God is strong and something else happens. He enables Moses to go and free the Israelites from their slavery. Then, what's my other one? Uh, Elijah. Yeah, let's go and have a look at Elijah. So Elijah is at Mount Carmel. And he prays to God. Prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. Oh Lord, answer me, answer me, so these people will know, oh Lord, that you have brought them back to yourself. And then immediately the fire of the Lord comes. Now the context of this, I was thinking, where did all this start? This fire battle that Elijah finds himself in against the prophets of, that worship Baal. And actually Elijah's challenge to the people is how long were you going to waver between two opinions if the Lord is God follow him but if Baal is God then follow him so here we have the fire as another show of God's power and God's strength but we also have it as working through Elijah to show people that they need to make that choice and I can't really talk about fire without mentioning this one Pentecost now there's another work of purifying, strengthening and enabling by the Holy Spirit and fire. You see, what's happening here is this baptism is a work in us, but it's also a work through us. And that's really evident in this part of the Bible where the disciples go out with greater boldness to speak about Jesus and his rescue plan and what he's done for those who haven't realised who he is. Right, I want to pray and I want to pray this. I want to pray that your faith, that your inner person, that your heart will be pure and it will be strong 
not by your own efforts, but by the Holy Spirit, who Jesus has given us as a helper whilst we are on this earth.